Welcome to Astronomy Daily, your source for the latest space and astronomy news. I'm your host, Anna, and we've got an exciting episode lined up for you today. We'll be exploring some fascinating developments in the world of space and astronomy that are sure to captivate your imagination. From a potentially dazzling comet that could light up our night sky, to innovative facilities preparing astronauts for lunar missions, we've got it all covered. We'll also dive into groundbreaking research that's pushing the boundaries of our understanding of life in the cosmos and revolutionary propulsion technology that could take us further into space than ever before. So strap in and get ready for a cosmic journey through the latest and most intriguing stories from the final frontier. Let's blast off into today's episode of Astronomy Daily. Get ready for a celestial spectacle that could light up our night sky this fall in the Northern Hemisphere. Astronomers are eagerly tracking Comet C2023A3, also known as Comet Tsuchinshan Atlas, which has the potential to shine as brightly as the North Star. This cosmic visitor hails from the distant Oort cloud, a region at the outer edges of our solar system. Discovered in early 2023 by observatories in South Africa and China, Comet A3 has captured the attention of both professional astronomers and space enthusiasts worldwide. What makes this comet so special? Well... According to models developed by researchers at the SETI Institute, Comet A3 could become one of the brightest objects visible in the Northern Hemisphere this autumn. If it survives its close encounter with the sun on September 27th, we might be in for a treat rivaling the spectacular Comet McNaught of 2007. But there's still much to learn about this celestial wanderer. After an unexpected period of dimming, the comet appears to be regaining its brightness. Scientists are considering various explanations, including possible fragmentation of the comet or effects related to its viewing angle from Earth. The Unistellar community, a network of citizen scientists, is actively contributing to our understanding of Comet A3. Over 25,000 users are tracking its progress, helping to refine predictions about its behavior as it approaches the inner solar system. Whether Comet A3 puts on the show of the decade or fizzles out, its approach offers a unique opportunity for both professional and amateur astronomers to study the dynamics of these fascinating objects from the outer reaches of our solar system. Next, let's take a look at a similar problem and how two different agencies around the globe are solving it, astronaut training in situ. The European Space Agency and German Aerospace Center have taken a giant leap in lunar mission preparation with their new facility called LUNA, located near Cologne, Germany. This innovative lunar analog aims to recreate the moon's surface right here on Earth, providing a crucial training ground for future astronauts. Luna's main feature is a massive 700-square-meter hall filled with about 900 tons of simulated lunar regolith. This material, known as EAC-1, is derived from volcanic powder found in Germany's Eiffel region. It closely mimics the fine, dusty surface astronauts will encounter on the moon, allowing them to practice moving and working in these challenging conditions. But Luna isn't just a giant sandbox. The facility also includes a specialized illumination system that can recreate lunar day and night cycles, each lasting 14 Earth days. This feature will help astronauts adapt to the unique lighting conditions they'll face during lunar missions. Future plans for Luna include the addition of gravity offloading systems to simulate the moon's reduced gravity, which is about one-sixth of Earth's. This will allow astronauts to experience and train for the physical challenges of working in a low-gravity environment. Luna will also serve as a testbed for robotic systems, rovers, and other tools crucial for lunar exploration. Scientists will use the facility to study the effects of moon dust on equipment, helping to develop solutions for the wear and tear that lunar missions will inevitably face. By providing this realistic lunar environment, Luna is set to play a vital role in preparing astronauts and equipment for the challenges of future moon missions, including NASA's Artemis program and beyond. Meanwhile, NASA's Artemis II crew has been getting their hands dirty in Iceland, quite literally. The team, consisting of NASA astronauts Reed Wiseman, Victor Glover, Christina Koch, and Canadian Space Agency astronaut Jeremy Hansen, recently traveled to the Nordic Island for some intense geology field training. Now you might be wondering why Iceland? Well, it turns out that Iceland's unique landscape bears a striking resemblance to the lunar surface. With its vast expanses of black and gray sediment, boulder-strewn grounds devoid of vegetation, and looming shadowy mountains, it's about as close to a moon-like environment as you can get on Earth. This isn't a new concept for NASA. In fact, Iceland has been serving as a lunar stand-in since the Apollo era. The similarities in geology are remarkable. Both Iceland and the moon feature basalts and breccias, 
types of rocks form through volcanic activity and impacts. During their training, the astronauts practiced using tools similar to those used in the Apollo missions. They learned to navigate the terrain, honed their expeditionary skills, and even gave feedback to their instructors. It's all about preparing them for the challenges they'll face during lunar exploration. While the Artemis II mission won't actually land on the moon, the geology fundamentals developed during this field training are crucial. The crew will be tasked with studying lunar surface features from orbit, taking photos, and describing what they see in scientific terms. This human touch and observation could provide invaluable data for researchers back on Earth. As we look towards a future of sustained lunar presence, this kind of hands-on training in Earth's lunar analogs will be essential in ensuring our astronauts are fully prepared for the challenges that await them on the moon and beyond. Some launch news from China this week. China has achieved another milestone in its space program with a successful sea launch of the Smart Dragon 3 rocket. On September 23rd, the rocket lifted off from a floating platform off the eastern coast of China, carrying eight remote sensing satellites into sun-synchronous orbit. This launch marks the fourth flight for the Smart Dragon 3, a four-stage rocket standing 102 feet tall and capable of delivering about 3,300 pounds of payload to orbit. What's particularly interesting about this launch is its location. By utilizing a sea-based platform, China demonstrates flexibility in its launch capabilities, potentially opening up new possibilities for future missions. Sea launches offer several advantages. They allow for launches closer to the equator, which can be more efficient for certain orbits. They also provide greater launch site options and can reduce risks associated with launches over populated areas. This success isn't just significant for China. It's part of a growing trend in the space industry towards more versatile and mobile launch options. As we look to the future of space exploration and satellite deployment, innovations like sea launches could play a crucial role in making space more accessible and expanding our capabilities beyond Earth. Now let's get an update from one of our enigmatic neighbors. Venus, often described as Earth's hellish twin, has long been considered inhospitable to life. However, recent research is challenging this assumption, offering a glimmer of hope for potential life in the most unexpected places. A new study has found that some of life's fundamental building blocks might actually survive in Venus's harsh environment. Scientists tested lipids, the essential components of cell membranes, under Venus-like conditions. Surprisingly, they discovered that certain lipids can withstand exposure to concentrated sulfuric acid and even form stable structures. This finding is significant because Venus's atmosphere contains regions with temperatures and pressures that could potentially support life. While the planet's surface is indeed sterilizing, its cloud deck might hold more promise. The research suggests that stable membranes can form and persist in the presence of sulfuric acid, challenging our assumptions about the solvents necessary for life. Water has long been considered crucial, but this study shows that some aspects of life's chemistry might tolerate and even use sulfuric acid as a solvent. These findings have implications beyond Venus. Concentrated sulfuric acid could be a common planetary solvent on exoplanets, either on Venus-like worlds or on rocky planets affected by their host star's activity. This broadens our understanding of potential habitable environments in the universe. While this doesn't prove the existence of life on Venus, it opens up new avenues for exploration and expands our perspective on where life might exist. As we continue to study our solar system and beyond, we're reminded that the universe may be more hospitable to life than we once thought. Finally today, something that may have been written off a sci-fi fantasy only a few short years ago, in a groundbreaking development, scientists are testing a revolutionary space propulsion system that could reshape our approach to deep space exploration. This innovative technology, known as Super Mag Drive, promises to use any type of metal as fuel, potentially allowing spacecraft to travel further into the cosmos than ever before. Led by Dr. Minkwan Kim from the University of Southampton, the research team is collaborating with British space firm MagDrive to test this new thruster. The system's versatility is its key advantage. It can be powered by common metals like iron, aluminum, or copper. This means that future spacecraft equipped with this technology could potentially refuel by harvesting minerals from asteroids or distant moons. The implications of this technology are truly exciting. Imagine a spacecraft landing on a metal-rich comet, replenishing its fuel supply, and then continuing its journey through the solar system and beyond. This could open up vast new frontiers in space exploration, allowing us to reach regions of the universe previously thought inaccessible. Dr. Kim, 
who has experience designing plasma thrusters for SpaceX, envisions this technology being used in future deep space missions. It could revolutionize our ability to explore new planets, seek out potential life, and push the boundaries of human knowledge. While still in the testing phase, the Super Mag Drive represents a significant step forward in space propulsion technology. If successful, it could usher in a new era of space exploration, enabling longer missions and more extensive studies of our cosmic neighborhood. And that brings us to the end of today's cosmic journey through the latest in space and astronomy news. I'm Anna, and I hope you've enjoyed this episode of Astronomy Daily as much as I've enjoyed bringing it to you. If you're hungry for more stellar content, don't forget to visit our website at astronomydaily.io. There, you can sign up for our free daily newsletter, catch up on all the latest space and astronomy news with our constantly updating news feed, and listen to all our back episodes. Want to stay connected with us on social media? Just search for Astro Daily Pod on Facebook, X, YouTube, and TikTok. We'd love to hear your thoughts and engage with you there. And while on that, I'd like to do a shout out today to Mary, or as she is known, Contrary Mary on TikTok. Mary is always giving us likes on our short video highlights and leaving little comments from time to time. Thank you, Mary. It's all very much appreciated. And thanks to all of you for tuning in today. And remember to keep looking up at the stars. Until next time, this is Anna signing off from Astronomy Daily. Astronomy.